Hi everyone, Donna here with Bookkeeping Made Simple. This is a show where we talk about everything to do with business. Hopefully some of the information I give you are, is going to be useful to you in trying to grow your business. It's a lot of work um, and business ownership is not for everyone. So if you're watching this channel, you're one of the chosen few who decided to embrace an entrepreneurial lifestyle. Um, I wanna talk more about an accounting topic today. But before I do that, um, again, this show was about all things business. So everything from mindset um, to even nutrition and exercise to uh, business coaching, where to find a good business coach, um, virtual assistants, anything that uh, that basically comes across my desk that I think would be useful to you as a business owner, I will talk about on this show. We are starting to bring more guests on, so it's not just going to be me, hopefully. Um, so I'm looking forward to talking to a new guest um, pretty soon, and I'll announce him later. Um, and today I want to talk about 1099s, specifically when it comes to Venmo. And that is a topic that is absolutely fraught. Um, so a little bit of housekeeping before I really delve into this. Um, as always, if you enjoy this show, please like, share, and subscribe. That is how I grow my channel. Um, this is one of my top marketing efforts. And so I'm constantly, you know, trying to do a better job. Um, I was going to do a fancier job and edit this, but I am going to have to practice editing videos before I spend a ton of time on it. Um, yeah, it's unbelievable how much work goes into this kind of thing. So, um, so we're going to talk about 1099s specifically when it comes to PayPal and Venmo because there's a lot of confusion about that. Part of the confusion, uh, and you can of course read more on my blog. I will, I'll up, uh, I will include the link in the description so you can just read the blog if you'd rather. Um, part of the confusion is about what PayPal and Venmo are. They are digital wallets, particularly Venmo. Venmo is used for this much, much more than PayPal these days um, because it's so convenient. Um, it is a, basically a digital wallet. So there's two kinds of Venmo users. We have personal users. This is just the profile you set up for yourself. You know, uh, ooh, I need to spend, send my roommates money for rent. You use Venmo. Um, I have a daughter that's living in California right now. She needs money. I typically send it through Venmo. I have another daughter who needs, you know, she may call and say, I need a little gas money. I send it to her through Venmo. None of these things are taxable events. Okay. Here's where the disconnect comes in. There's, like I said, there's two kinds of profiles you can have on Venmo. One is a personal profile, and that is where you're doing kind of the things that I'm talking about. You're splitting the check. You're paying a friend for rent. You're you're um, paying someone a yard sale for something that was like two bucks. Um, you're paying, I've, I've used Venmo to pay for parking. I've used Venmo to pay for a lot of things, none of which should have been taxable. However, Venmo is also a third party payment processor. They're a merchant account. And this is available, it's available to everybody, but specifically for those who set up a business profile. Now, I'm going to throw in there that it is against Venmo's terms and conditions to uh, take business payments through a personal profile. So if you have a business, you should have a business profile on, Ven on Venmo. Um, and that is one, it's to alert Venmo that, yes, this is a business account and we're gonna have to create a 1099 probably. Um, the other reason is um, because if you are sending money through your business profile to someone who has a business profile and they receive more than $600 in a calendar year, you will not have to worry about a 1099. Again, I'm going to tell you, it's an unholy mess. I understand. It's, I have spent a couple of days trying to unravel this for myself. Um, even though I, Even though I understand it sometimes, Understanding it well enough to explain it is a different thing. 
So we have Venmo that people just use as a digital wallet. This is not affected by that. The only time this is going to be affected is if one, you toggle the switch when you're making a payment. If you toggle the switch that says this is for business goods and services. The other time is if you have a business profile and you're receiving benefit, you're receiving payments to Venmo. Okay. Now, kind of answer the question. Well, let's, let's begin at the beginning. Okay. Number one, what is a 1099 to start with? A 1099, it's an informational return. It's a form that we filed with the IRS. They are due by the end of January. Side note, if you want bookkeeping made simple to do your 1099s, I need to know in December because I'm not scrambling. And we stop January 31st. We're done. We don't even touch 1099s again. Uh, and the reason for that is that one, it's uh, always a big mess. Every year I sit down the last quarter of the year and I'm like, I'm going to make 1099s easy. And every year I'm stymied <laughs> about how to do that. Um, so if you, it is an informational return, all it does is it tells the IRS, hey, IRS, I paid this person this much money in this calendar year. Okay. You only have to give them out to people who received $600 or more to provide services for you. If they are selling goods, if they're selling through Amazon, if you're buying a couch or a love seat or something like that through them, you don't have to, to do this. This is for services. The whole point of it is to for the IRS to be able to capture these payments that are kind of outside of the payroll system. So if you're a gig worker, you should expect to receive 1099s. If you are um, a subcontractor of any kind, you should expect to receive a 1099. You should actually have filled out a form W-9 before you ever got paid. And I do advise this to all of my clients. Make sure you're getting that, 10, that W-9 form before you pay them a penny because that's a little way of making sure that you get the information you need before the end of the year. <laughs> okay. So everybody gets a 1099 unless they are incorporated. If they provided services to your business, and you've paid them more than $600 in a calendar year, they need to be provided with a 1099. If you do not send the 1099s and they are not sent on time, that's that January 31st deadline, you could be subject to very hefty penalties. Kind of going back a little bit, however, if you hire an accounting firm to do it, or if you're getting your secretary to do it, you're getting us to do it, whatever, it is still your responsibility as a taxpayer to make sure that they went out and they are correct. In our company, we, multi we send reports multiple times to all of our clients, basically stating these are the people we think should receive a 1099, these are the people that are within the threshold, but it's still up to the client to make sure that that information is one, correct, and to complete. So we don't have a lot of legal liability there, just as by way of warning. Um, so the 1099 comes in multiple flavors, okay? So the one that everyone's worried about right now with Venmo is the 1099K. The one that has to go out to subcontractors, gig workers, service providers is a 1099-NEC, and that stands for non-employment compensation. There's also 1099 miscellaneous, there's 1099 government, there's 1099 retirement, there's 1099, there's a whole alphabet soup of them. Um, but the ones that we deal with the most, the 1099-Ks, 1099-K is used to report earnings that come through a third party processor. Usually that's something like Heartland Merchant Services, something like, um, you know, maybe your bank has merchant services set up and it'll almost always be called a merchant account. Um, and that allows you to process things like ACH payments and credit card payments and debit card payments 
um, through their through their terminal. So when you when you swipe your card at a point of sale terminal, they are using a merchant account to then process that payment, receive the money from the credit card company, and remit it to the merchant. Okay, that's what a 1099k is designed to track. So if you have more than $20,000 in merchant um, account payments, in other words, you've taken more than $20,000 in credit card, debit card, or ACH payments, then you should expect to see a 1099K and it will list out everything that, that you've received. These go out to business, people who have a business profile on their Venmo account. And again, violation of the terms of services if you don't, but you're acting as a business morning morning. The 1099 NEC goes out to anybody who did not have a business profile on Venmo and received more than $600 per calendar year of services or payments for their services. So the $600 is the threshold. Um, I, I look every year to see if they're going to change that. No, no, they have not changed this since the 80s. When $600 was really a lot of money. Um, so what is happening, the IRS wants to know how much we all got paid because they want to tax us on every dollar. Um, that's their job. So you have to provide a 1099 NEC to your contractors, service providers, anyone that's not incorporated who provides services to your businesses. Again, goods are not included in that. That's usually subject to something else. Okay. Where the challenge in this comes in is that Venmo is used both as a digital wallet for personal use and as a third party merchant processor. And when you throw that into the mix, it becomes very confusing. Um, yes, it's very convenient. Yes, I do use it a lot. Yes, it is a pain in the neck at the end of the year. One of the questions people have asked me quite a bit, especially as we're coming to the end of the year, is um, if I paid my subcontractors through Venmo, do I need to provide them a 1099? And the answer is, it depends. Does your contractor have a business profile on Venmo? Did you mark that payment as being for services provided? Uh, in other words, did you alert Venmo that yes, this is for business? Um, if both of those are new, then yes, you should provide a 1099. If either of those is yes, then no, Venmo will take care of it. And that is where the problem is. Because when you when you send money to someone, you don't always know if they've set up a business profile. So, and the other thing is, for two years in a row, Venmo has said, oh, we're going to enforce the $600 threshold. And then the last month of the year, they've done it again, said, oh, well, yeah, yeah, you're right. And it, Congress and the IRS and Venmo have all and then kind of screwed this up. Um, the end of the year, they come in and say, oh, well, it's too much trouble. We're going to have to take a little bit more time to, to uh, phase this in. So it's been interesting. And this is an ongoing question since last year. Last year, they tried to do the same thing. Yes, they're going to send a 1099K for anyone who uses them as a merchant processor. That does not mean every single Venmo transaction. It doesn't even mean everyone who sends or receives Venmo transactions over $600. It means business transactions. Okay, so if you are a subcontractor or a service provider that provides services to small businesses um, and you are not incorporated, you need to make sure that you, if, if the people who paid you didn't reach out, you need to reach out to them and make sure you have a W-9 on file with them because they can get in trouble for not providing you a 1099. You can get in trouble for not claiming all of your income. Sooner or later, the IRS always makes that. 
So, um, so what do you need to do about the 1099K? Um, what all you really need to do is you need to take your 1099K and compare it to your gross revenue for the year. If your 1099K is less than or equal to your gross revenue for the year, you don't have anything to worry about. That means that the IRS has all of the information that they need to be able to verify your return. If, however, your 1099K shows more money came in than you're showing in gross revenue, then we need to talk because that means that somewhere along the way, revenue is not being recognized. It's not being, um, it's, it's just not being counted somewhere. Um, so then we need to start looking at all of the batches. We need to start looking at a lot of things to see where the discrepancy is. Um, but as long as your combined 1099 pays, some people have more than one, um, are less than or equal to your gross revenue. And it should be less than, honestly. I'm sure most business owners take cash payments once in a while. They take check payments once in a while. Uh, nobody is completely cashless. So it should be less than your gross revenue. As long as it's less than or equal to, you're fine. Okay, That means that the IRS has received report that your income, your revenue, is at least as much as what's reported on the 1099K. It's okay if your gross revenue is more. The IRS would like to see that. Um, and then what we will do is we will take your profit and loss and your balance sheet, and we'll start seeing what we can write off. Anything that we can possibly write off without throwing up any red flags for audits or attracting the attention of the IRS, we will write off. And I'm going to discuss some of these tax write-offs in a later video, but today I really wanted to talk about the 1099s and Venmo. Um, so it, in the, the trick with 1099s, everybody overthinks it. Everybody overthinks it. Again, threshold is $600 in a calendar here. Threshold for 1099Ks, the third-party merchant processors, is $20,000 or 200 transactions. So if you're below that threshold, again, you want to make sure that you're reporting what went through the merchant processor, because that's all going to go to the IRS somehow. Um, but as long as your income, your gross revenues show at least as much as your combined 1099Ks, then you should be fine. Okay. Well, what if you get a 1099K and a 1099NEC? Then you need a, a tax professional. <laughs> so I realize this is really a challenging topic. It's even challenging for us. We're constantly talking within the company about, well, what do we do about these 1099s, especially where Venmo is concerned? And really what we do is we watch it very closely. And about the last quarter of the year, we start looking to see, hmm, what are we going to have to do? So if you're not sure, um, we want to make sure that you remain compliant with all of the reporting requirements. But if you're not sure, you have questions, you're you're not sure about this 1099K implementation. Again, this started last year, but this year it's continuing under the lower thresholds and it will be phased in, I'm told, over a few years. Um, I do also can tell you there's a lot of pushback from um, lobbyist groups for small business owners because this creates so much more paperwork for a small business owner and they don't necessarily have the time to do it. it does kind of feel like we're being picked on. Um, and with that said, I'm going to go ahead and close the video. Thank you for watching, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.